focus on hitting your goals in every area of your business. Remember, the universe rewards the bold. A leader has to take the risks. Well, hello everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, my name is Kevin Nolan. I'm here today just to talk to you about really how to pass uh, your life insurance test. Uh, some of the tips I'm going to give you will work for any test. It'll work with the securities test. To be honest you, with you, it would work with real estate or college or whatever exams you're taking. Uh, but my focus today really is getting people passed uh, with their life insurance test. So I want to talk a little bit, give you some tips up front about studying tips. And then mainly I have some multiple choice uh, options where you can pass any multiple choice test if you have these um, tips with you. So, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's start with, first of all, when you're studying for an exam, um, there's three things that are important, right? One is you gotta be able to comp comprehend it a little bit, right? And then the two most important are being able to retain it and then to recall it. Recall it is really important when it comes to the actual test itself. So you gotta comprehend and understand you obviously got to be able to retain it, which is one of the things I'm going to talk about today. And then being able to recall it is the most important. When you can recall stuff, right, that's what a multiple choice test really is for. Unlike an essay test or, or something like that, right, these are multiple cho choice tests. So, so let's give you a couple of tips just to get started, right, so that you can understand what I'm talking about. I'll talk about all three of those. So, so the first one is I really want you to be able to study correctly. And I know that sounds funny, right? But there really, there really is a good way to study and a bad way to study. The challenge becomes for most people, it's not the same. Everybody is different. So how you study, right, is different depending on you, uh, depending on your personality, how you went to school, how you learn, that kind of stuff. So some of those things are critical to being able to comprehend, most importantly, being able to retain. Right? Your brain, I mean, we only use 10% of our brains, they say. Your brain remembers stuff when you put it in. Once you've seen it once or twice, the brain remembers it. It's just the ability to recall it when you want to recall it that really becomes the key. So my goal here really is to give you some tips where you're going to be able to retain stuff a little bit better. And then most importantly, be able to recall it a little bit better. So first, let's talk about... Um, a couple of things. The first thing is your peak time. So when you're studying for a test, right, obviously you got to do some reading, right? Some people like to write notes, some people like to highlight. So, but it's important that you study during your peak time. And everybody's is different, like I said. Your peak time might be early in the morning, your peak time might be late at night, right? Your efficiency, your retention efficiency is what they call it. Your retention efficiency goes up when you are studying during your peak time. So if you're an early morning person and you feel like you get up, refresh, and you're ready to go and you get a lot done early in the morning, then that's probably your peak time, right? Or vice versa, if it's 10 or 11 o'clock at night and you're just getting started, well, then that's your peak time. So I really recommend that the first thing you do is when you start to study, that you study during your peak time and figure out what that is. So the next thing that I'm going to tell you is that you shouldn't study for more than 90 minutes at a time. 90 minutes is pretty long to study, right? They say, the studies show, that after about an hour to 90 minutes, your retention level is almost cut in half, right? So that means you're wasting your time reading, even if you're during your peak time, you're wasting your time studying because you're not going to retain it, right? So if you can't retain it, you can't recall it, that's going to hurt you on the test. So make sure you're not studying for more than 90 minutes. Uh, my other... Uh, advice that I give everybody is whatever study time you are taking, that's how much time you should take a break. So if you study for 30 minutes, then take a 30 minute break. If you study for an hour, take an hour break, right? If you study for an hour, hour and a half, and take a five minute break and go back, your retention levels go down to like 30, 35%, depending on the person. And that's the last thing you want. You really, when you're studying and reading, you should only have to read once or twice the information through. After that, it's just a matter of how you study for the test. So, but the retention part is really easy if you're at your peak time and you're studying correctly. So, um, very important, very, very important. The next thing is how you study, right? And what I mean by that is, do you, do you like to have noise on? Some people like to have the radio or the TV or listen to music, 
right? Some people need it deathly quiet. So those things matter when you're studying. So you have to figure out what works for you. Um, you know when you're the most efficient and figure out those times. So if it's your early morning time and you like it super quiet, that's great, right? The other thing when it comes to studying for the test after you've got the comprehension part down is are you audio or visual, right? Some people retain stuff a lot better when they hear it. Some people retain stuff a lot better when they actually visually see it, like a video of, you know, training or something like that. So depending on which one you are, um, it's easy to find out. You can always go on Google. There's some tests you can do for retention and audio and visual to kind of give you an idea. But I'm sure you probably know how you like it when you're studying. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. Right. So as long as you figure out those things, you're going to be at your peak performance time and your peak performance time, again, is the best time for you to do your your reading or your comprehension part and your studying as well. So now. So, like I said, there's there's three parts. There's the comprehension, there's the retention and then there's recall. So let's give you some tips for comprehension. Right. So that you understand stuff. This stuff will help you not only with comprehension mainly, but with some retention, too. So I'm going to give you some ways to increase your comp your uh, comprehension, and then I'm going to give you some ideas to, that will decrease your comp comprehension, right? So you know not what to do. So you know what to do, and you know what not to do, basically, right? These are really important. So first thing, obviously, you got to be focused. You got to have your attention and concentration on what you're doing, right? So that means no distractions. You got to eliminate outside distractions. If you have kids, if you have a wife, if you have a dog. Right? All of those things are outside distractions when you're trying to comprehend and study you know, for a test. So you got to eliminate those. Whether that means you go somewhere else like a library or the park or you go into a room where nobody's allowed to come in. Whatever it is, you got to eliminate the distractions. Right? The distractions will really hurt when it comes to your comprehension and also your retention. So the next thing is you should try to provide an uncluttered space. Right? It should be clean, semi-clean, right? Because you don't want to be distracted by the things in your room. So if you've ever started studying, you're reading, and all of a sudden you look up and you're like, oh, I got to do the laundry because you see the laundry over on the floor, or I got to do this, you've lost your concentration. So it's important that it's uncluttered, it's a clean environment, whether that's your car, whether that's in a room at your house, doesn't matter. Just make sure that all of those distractions and it's uncluttered. So now let's talk about the actual while you're reading. While you're reading the information, you really should try not to get hung up on a single word or a sentence, right? If there's a word you really don't understand, you can stop, right, and look up that definition of the word. But to be honest, when you're in the comprehension stage, right, all you're really trying to do, you're trying to understand it, but you're trying to get it in your brain, right? Once it's in your brain, it's there, then we just got to be able to recall it. So if you get stuck on a word or a sentence and you start fixating on that instead of just reading, well, it's going to hurt you in the long run as far as how you retain information. So that's really important, right? The other thing you want to try to do is instead of just while you're reading, you want to try to grasp the concept, right? You're not specific on a word or a, or a, a, st a statement, a sentence, right? You're trying to grasp the different concepts as you're reading. Right? What is whole life insurance, as an example, versus universal life, versus term? So those are, right, those are different types of concepts. You have to understand those. So understand the big picture. Don't be so focused on the individual words and stuff like that. And then one of the things that you shouldn't do is you shouldn't vocalize. So if you're reading, right, and you do it out loud, so that's, that hurts your comprehension, right? The best thing that you can do if you do that, if you move your mouth a lot or if you read out loud a lot, right? For most people, the best thing you can do is put something in your mouth, right? Now, don't, don't sue me, right? Make sure it's non-toxic. You don't swallow something that's going to, you know, damage your throat or something like that. But maybe like a pencil eraser, something simple that'll keep your mouth busy so that you're not moving your mouth or you're not vocalizing. And to be honest, that can help. Almost 40% of your comprehension goes away with that alone. So that's very, very important. So if you read out loud or move your lips, it definitely decreases your uh, comprehension level. So make sure you do that. So now here's some of the things that also decrease your comprehension. Reading mechanically, right? Reading mechanically means you're just reading the words. Hello, today is the fourth day. If you sound like a robot, that hurts your comprehension, right? 
your brain adjust to your emotional level. So as you're reading, don't just be fixated on reading every word exactly the same monotone, right? If you do that, so you're going to, um, you're, you're going to hurt your comprehension level. So the other thing is, and I think this is probably the biggest key, is people do the wrong kind of, kind of reading. I don't know if you know this or not, but there's actually three different kinds of reading, right? There's quick reference reading, which is specific, right? It's the what. Maybe it's a date. Maybe it's a insurance law. Right? Maybe it's a federal law. So things like that. That's quick reference stuff. Then, of course, there's critical reading. Critical reading is when you're trying to discern ideas and concepts. Right, That's the why. So, And that's a lot of what you should be doing for multiple choice and for your life insurance test, right? even your securities test. So critical reading is really the key. And then the last one is aesthetic reading or pleasure reading. Right? It's like reading a novel. So a lot of people, when you're reading a novel about something that you're interested in, whether it's a biography or, right, one of those telenova novels, whatever it is, right, you read it for entertainment. You don't, like, stop and think about the words. You don't stop and, like, oh, I wonder what he was trying to, what was the meaning of that or something like that. You're reading it for pleasure, right? And, and if you choose or read the wrong way, then your comprehension levels go way down. So do yourself a favor, make sure you're in that critical reading stage where you're really trying to grasp concepts, right, versus either the specific reading, which is like cramming, as an example. A lot of people cram for their exam the night before, right? That's not the best way to do that because your comprehension goes way down and your retention goes way down. So it's very important, right, that you don't do that. So, um, okay, so that's the, the retention, the comprehension, and being able to recall. Now, the, the biggest thing that I want to give you today is uh, just some steps that you can use to, multi to, to pass right, any multiple choice test, no matter what test you take. So you have to study, right? If you think you're just going to get my cheat sheet here, right, and you're going to go in and you're going to pass, you're probably not going to pass. But if you do studying correctly, right, not too much studying, but you read it once or twice, you take a practice, practice exam once or twice, right, and then go from there, and then use these tips. These tips will help you with all the questions that you either don't, can't recall, or you didn't retain, right? So this information really from this point forward is, hey, you got to memorize these and know them when you go in to take the test, right? But these are your backups. This isn't your main way of taking a test. But, right, for a lot of people, they, two things happen. Either you go in and you think, wow, I aced it, and you come out and you failed, right? Or you miss it by two or three or four questions, right? So, and this will help you with those two or three or four questions. So if you memorize these, and as you're going through it, right, you use these, these tips, then you'll pass the test on the first time, right? So first of all, right, you want to make sure when you're taking the test, read the whole question first, right? Before you even look at the answers, you want to read the whole question, and then think of an answer yourself. Whatever answer comes to mind, and then read the answers, right? Make sure, read the whole question first, come up with an answer yourself before you even look at the answers. Don't try to look at the answers first and skip over. Don't try to read half the question, right? And then go to the, go to the answers. That is not gonna help you, right? If you come across a, a question, especially one that you have no idea, right? You wanna read the whole question first, that'll help you on the test. So number two is be careful that you don't read too much into the question. Right? Don't try to second guess yourself. Right? There's, there's no trick questions. The goal of the test is for you to know the information, right? And they throw in some things to make sure you know it. Right? So some of the answers are kind of the close, right? Or they'll have words in there that are like which one is not, and you don't read the not part, so you put the wrong answer down. But the goal is not to trick you. The goal is for you to know the information. So some of the questions, yeah, they have answers that are similar. But it's not a trick. The goal is not to trick you on the test, right? So don't second guess yourself, right? Your first answer is usually always correct. The only time that changes is when you come to another question and it gave you the answer from that previous one, and then you can go back and change it. But you really shouldn't be changing your answers or not very many of your answers during the test. So don't second guess yourself. Always, right? If the answer or the choice is positive, it's more likely than a negative one. So if you come across a question and you don't have any clue, right, your brain dies, brain freeze, whatever you want to call it, right, then always choose a positive answer versus a negative answer. 
So most tests are set up, this test especially, is set up that way. So, right? But you do want to make sure that you check for negative words. That goes back to why you read the whole question. Because some of the questions are the opposite. It's going to say, you know, of the following, which one is not true, right? And if you don't read the not, you're going to say which one is, and then you go through and answer the true one, which will be on there. They want to make sure that you're paying attention. So make sure that you're looking for those negative words. If you see those, right, then you know that it's going to be the opposite of what the answer or what the answer should be. So don't go against your first impulse. I said that before already, right? Your first impulse is almost always correct. So right, your brain, once you have the information in there, you've retained it. Now it's recalling it. You have a neuro, neuro pathway that goes to that. So if you second guess yourself, right, a lot, then you're going to, you're going to mess up that neural pathway and you're going to answer wrong. Right? That actually happens a lot when you come out and you think you did really good and then you failed. That's because you had issues with that neural pathway to those answers. So don't do that. So, and uh, I can tell you number six, the answer is usually wrong if it contains these words. So if the words all or always or never or none are in there, it is almost always wrong, right? Because there are, everything has an exception in so it's really hard for a question to say always or none because usually there's an exception. So if you see any of those words, right, then you know right away that the answer is usually wrong. That's not the right answer. Pick a different answer. You want something that doesn't have those words into it. Okay. So number seven, the, if it contains, uh, if the answer contains a great chance of being right, if it says sometimes, probably, and some. So that's the opposite. So basically, right, if it says sometimes or probably, then that's going to be the answer because it's not as specific, right? And most things have either an exception or a rule. So because of that, it works the opposite of the always, never principle. So if you come across a question like that and the answer says sometimes or probably and you're not sure what it is, go with that, right? That will help you. So uh, when you don't know the right answer, try to seek out the wrong ones. So, so imagine on a multiple choice question, you have four a test, you have four questions or four answers, right? So if you're not sure what the right answer is, but you know one of them is wrong for sure, well, you've it just increased your odds by 25%. If you know two of them are wrong, right, and you eliminate two, now you're up to 50%. So again, you don't do this on every question. These are for the questions that you're not sure of what the answers are. But if you use that tip and eliminate the wrong answers, well, then your odds go up a lot for that. So but don't eliminate an answer unless you actually know what every word means. So in the answer, if there's words that you're not sure of, those should be the last ones you eliminate, right? So if you eliminate it too soon, you could be taking away the correct answer. Make sure you do that. Number 10, don't seek out patterns, okay? So if you get a C question, a C answer, a C answer, a C answer, it doesn't mean the next one's gonna be C. I know a couple years back, Right, the way the test was going, it was people were saying five at a time, five C, five B, five. Right, that is not how you pass this test. There are none of those kind of sequences in there, so it's just by chance. Look, there's certain sections of each part of the of the information that you have to answer questions on, and those are random. So if they're random, there's no way there's a pattern. Don't just go, oh, I've answered five C's in a row. The next one has to be C. If you do that, you're really going to hurt yourself. Right. Okay, three more. Number 11, read every answer before you pick one, right? Some of this stuff is basic for test taking, but people forget to do that, right? Especially on a time test, you think you're going to run out of time. People will read the question, and the first answer that they see that they think is it, they'll, they'll put that answer on there, and sometimes that means they're going to miss it. Make sure you read every single answer all the way through before you choose the answer that you're going to take. Yes, it's going to take a little bit more time, but you have plenty of time on this test. Most people don't even come close to the time frame that they give you, right? So make sure you're reading all the way through before you make a choice. Number 12, if the, if the answer is long or seems kind of complicated, then more than likely that's the correct answer. The reason why is for a lot of the rules, for a lot of the concepts, it takes more to explain what they mean, right? It's not a one letter or a one word answer unless it's true or false, right? So if the answer is longer and you don't, you're not sure what it is, go with the longer answer because the longer answer normally means that they're trying to explain more information, give up whatever exceptions there are, and that's going to be the answer on the test. 
So, and the last one, don't give up on a question after, read your, after reading it one time, right? Just because it seems hopeless that you read it and you didn't understand it, don't give up on it, right? Maybe read it from a different point of view, maybe start in the middle, maybe pick out some of the keywords and then go back and read it. After you've read it all the way through and you've read all the answers, go back and read it again, right? If you just go, I don't understand, right? You're going to draw the wrong picture. And once you do that, you could go down a rabbit hole that makes you miss two or three or four questions. So, so don't give up on one question at a time. So I hope those tips helped you. If you use those tips along with a a little bit of comprehension and retention uh, information I gave you at the the beginning, there's no way that you can fail this test. Follow it correctly. Learn these multiple choice tests, right, our tips, and you will pass the test. And once you do that, the sky is the limit. You have a great day. Thanks for listening, and hopefully you pass your test. Thank you very much. Bye. So thank you guys very much. Hey, if you get a chance, if you want more tips, if you'd like to know, I have uh, on my YouTube channel, it's called In The Know, In The Letter N, The Know, with Kevin R. Nolan. Facebook, Instagram, right, YouTube channel. I have a whole bunch of videos coming out trying to help people pass their tests, get some basic information of insurance and investing. I'm there to help you go share this video with anybody that you can think of that would like to study for the test, any test, but especially the life insurance test, right? And hopefully we'll see you on my page. Thanks. Bye.